I think having roots here, having feeling a part of this, really uh, nourishes him in, in a in a way. I think uh, grounds him, uh, keeps him, keeps him sane. Well, I was raised on a farm uh, west of Edmonton, a little hamlet called Duffield, and uh, went to school in Duffield and uh, high school in Stony Plain. I, uh, but I, I, I really enjoyed uh, farm life. I think it was a very fortunate to be raised on a farm. Uh, you learned a number of things. You learned some discipline in life. You learned uh, how to not to be afraid of some hard physical work at times, and. Uh, but also, you, you learn so much with growing up, working with the animals, working in the fields, working with tractors. And you do that, uh, most farm kids start that pretty early. They live just a quarter of a mile away from us. And we used to go horseback riding together, and I think his horse's name was Topsy, if I remember, you can ask him. Both of us on the one horse. My mother, I think, read a fair amount, and uh, she tended to be a lay physician. She used to think uh, she knew a lot about medicine, and surprisingly, she did know quite a bit. She was often right. My father was, uh, you know, I, I really learned a lot of discipline from him and not to be afraid of hard work. And he also taught me the love of uh, working with animals. He was a tremendous person with animals. I came to the university uh, 1961 and uh, early September and uh, you know it was so different uh, for me I had never been away from home very much and I moved into residence it was Athabasca Hall at that time. Sitting one night at a table with one of Lauren's classmates when uh, uh, Lauren and another friend came in they had been uh, working on an experiment and, and came to eat supper there, so we ended up eating together and met and talked. And a couple days later, I phoned Pim in the hall. I said, I'm looking for a girl named Leanne. And all I know is her name is Leanne, and she's from Regina. And there are about 150 girls in there, and it was her that uh, she'd picked up the phone. There was only one phone down in the hallways at that time. And she picked up the phone and answered and was, my name's Leanne, I'm from Regina. So. I think it was probably within only a few weeks or a month um, we were engaged, though we didn't get married right away. So that's the, that's the story. <laughs> I came back uh, from uh, completing my PhD, entered uh, residency in obstetrics. After a year in obstetrics, I switched into internal medicine, and um, Dr. Goldsand was certainly an impressive uh, staff person. He was running the infectious disease service here, and he had uh, some young colleagues with him, and it was a very attractive service. And uh, Dr. Goldsand had a way of uh, making infectious diseases extremely interesting. He ultimately turned out to be a legitimate triple threat, a superb clinician, a superb teacher, and the uh, superb researcher. And I was a medical student when I first met him, and he was a resident in training. All of us who interacted with him thought, I want to grow up to be just like him. He has remained perpetually youthful, and because of that, he can still play. And he's fun to be with because he plays with ideas. And out of that play come you know, the, these new concepts that no one's ever thought of before. You know how children will color a tree purple and, you know, by the time we get them to grade six, um, we've, you know, pretty well beat that out of them. They'd never think of coloring a tree purple because it's supposed to be green. Well, he sees purple trees and, and the potential for that to exist. I think the tremendous, tremendous satisfaction to think that a disease like hepatitis, that you've been able to alter it. You've been able to alter it in many, many people around the world. Uh, we don't have a lot of hepatitis B in Canada, but you know, when you go to China and you go to Indonesia, you go to the Philippines, uh, there's literally 
millions and tens of millions of people with this disease and to think that you might alter that disease and the outcome of the disease in those people is the people that carry it, that's tremendous. I, I never remember a sense that, um, that this was something that he was doing because it was a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, that it was uh, something that, uh, that really challenged him and that he thought there was some opportunity to, to make some contributions. You know, I feel I've been extremely lucky uh, in my life. Uh, very, very supportive wife. Um, kids have always been very tolerant of uh, me being away a lot. But uh, try to get back, try to spend time, try to have dinner at home. That's number one. To at least have some time every day together as a family is extremely important if we can do it.